Hey everybody, good evening. It is um, uh, Thursday, March 29th, 2018. 10.17 uh, p.m. New York time, and I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, I just want to make a quick video. I'll try to keep this really short. Um, you know, as you guys know, I, I trade uh, primarily Elliott Wave combined with fundamentals. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to belabor that point. You can obviously watch all my videos and watch my intro video and kind of tell you all that. But um, this one's a little bit off topic because, um, you know, there are there are weeks where there's not a lot going on in, in terms of schedule, fundamental news. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't mean there aren't trading opportunities. <clears throat> and this is going to be a little bit of a deviation because people, because I've said in my videos before that, look, you know, fundamentals drive price and, and they do. Um, but that, um, you know, you can't rely purely on technicals. And that's true. Um, you know, but if you look at the, the calendar this week, there's really not a lot on here. Even these things that are categorized as red really are not very impactful. And the only thing really maybe you'll have tomorrow uh, would be uh, Canadian GDP. But the rest of these things that we saw this week were, were, were pretty, re really not very productive in terms of fundamental news. Um, and so, you know, you look at that and say, okay, well, maybe I have no trading opportunities this week. And, and that's not the case. Um, I actually took several good trades just based on, um, on technical analysis and chart patterns, uh, not necessarily tied to Elliott Wave, although I always keep Elliott in my mind in terms of uh, targets, stop loss targets for take profit and, uh, and also a wave count if I can see it. So I just wanted to show you a couple of these. And, you know, I, I'm not deviating away from what I do. Um, but, uh, you know, when you see weeks like this where there's not really too much exciting news um, on, the, uh, on the scheduled calendar, which is the case this week, you know, you have to try to find other things if you want to trade. Unless you don't want to trade. So I'm just going to go through a couple of charts here very, very quickly and uh, just show you some of the things that I'm looking at. And so, uh, you know, here's the U.S. dollar. Uh, excuse me, the Aussie against the U.S. dollar. And, um, you know, I've drawn out uh, these these channels. And basically what I do is I go through the, the chart starting around the daily chart. And I'm just looking for uh, channels. Um, I'm looking for, uh, you know, either uh, wedges or channels and, and something that uh, would, would point to a particular movement. So here's the Aussie dollar. Um, uh, this is the daily chart. And you can see, you know, we, we've got this channel here. You can see it really clear on the daily chart. And we're back down. You can see it's holding this trend line quite nicely. And so we'll see what happens. And I'm not telling you to go ahead and trade this long because, you know, this easily could break down, uh, you know, through the channel finally and start going down. But it's something to keep an eye on, you know, as we, as you know, when there's no fundamental news, you'll find that the price will, will bounce in between trend lines. And, you know, we have a, uh, you know, we have a, a falling wedge here. And, uh, you know, uh, at some point, this type of pattern ends and, you know, either shoots up or down either way. So, but it's very clear that it's holding these levels. And so I wouldn't be surprised if we work back towards the top of this again. But again, I'm not taking you, telling you to take this trade. I'm just showing you um, for the purpose of this video. Um, and so, you know, Aussie dollar, again, showing you to go up. Here's the Aussie yen. Now you can see on the Aussie yen, this here we are on the 12 hour chart. I drew this trend line down. And we have been obviously been in a pretty strong downtrend here. And now we see this this big green candle that broke through. And uh, on the 12 hour chart, we broke through this and now, now we're retracing. We go down to maybe a one hour chart. We've broken through here and now we're kind of moving sideways. I expect maybe price even could retest this trend line. But you see this blue arrow I have here that I do expect price to go up. And so uh, that's purely a technical bounce. Um, but it would fall in line with the uh, uh, with the Aussie dollar too. Um, the Kiwi dollar um, again. We've uh, this is a trade I, I'm actually still live in on my live account, um, uh, and, and you can see I have this label as an ABCDE. This is the daily chart. Uh, it's probably not really a tri an Elliott wave triangle, but um, you know again we're just you know falling and we're just you know holding these trend lines perfectly in between. So naturally, you know, I went short from about up here and uh, have a nice little profit going. And uh, I would expect this will continue down and potentially retest these lows down here. And again, at some point, all these patterns break and it will be a fundamental piece of news that will cause it to break. But as long as there's really nothing, you know, driving this, um, 
you're going to continue to just move in between these lines and it's an opportunity if you know you want to take some risk you know, I, I would wait until you either hit one side or the other and then it's low risk because like you know you get up here and sell it you can put a stop loss right about here and if you're wrong you have very little risk and you get out uh, I wouldn't take it from anywhere where it is right now because unless you're already in it because you're you're sitting right in the middle and you could uh, you'd have to have a pretty big stop loss so but just be you know keep an eye out for these type of patterns that's all I'm saying um, Kiwi yen you know um, same thing here I mean a Kiwi dollar looking at it going down Kiwi yen same thing we're holding this downtrend line I would expect that we'll move back up to uh, and retest this trend line and go down so that's a potential opportunity for a short uh, on the uh, Kiwi yen we still have a pretty strong downtrend going on here and again it's just looking for those type of opportunities um, here's the US Canadian now I have two trend lines here I have a longer trend line on the 12 hour chart we can see we held 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 kept going up and now we've broken that and now we've retested it and now we're continuing to work down and uh, that's on the 12 hour if you go down to about the three hour you'll see we're kind of working sideways and so this is one where you know I'd wait for a break of this trend line I would be surprised if we go up again and come down and test it again but you know a break maybe below this low would be a, a good a sell trade on the US Canadian uh, again based purely on technicals um, you know we it looks like we've reached the end of a trend and we certainly is more downside so so again it's just looking at these you know these trend lines and then recognizing when it's broken and then you know looking at what happens after that uh, again never forgetting what the fundamentals are saying but again when there's nothing really to drive the market um, then these are the type of things you can look for US yen and now this is a conflict because US Canadian looks like it wants to go down but the yen pairs are completely different so on the US yen um, we've got uh, this falling trend line here we've been keeping we broke through it here now we're working back down I wouldn't be surprised to see a retest of this trend line and then uh, potentially a bounce back up so I would keep an eye on this I, I wouldn't take it now um, but I'll be watching what happens when we retrace back around this trend line to see if we bounce back up again again barring any fundamental news the trend is down so I am a little bit cautious about that but clearly on this candle we broke through um, you know that this this downtrending line so uh, let me see what other ones we got here uh, euro pound if I can find it yeah here we go um, so euro pound you can see this uh, blue arrow right here I had to drawn this in before this happened because that's why it doesn't really line up and I was looking at this as being an area to sell and you can see it, it, it pretty much came here it sold and now it's continuing to correct again so um, the, uh, the 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 euro pound is is in a, is in a kind of a selling state right now so uh, it's, this is not a pair I trade very often but uh, I would continue to look for some shorts here. Um, going to the pound pairs, so this here's the pound yen. You can see again a perfect rising channel here. We're just kind of holding these trend lines up, down, up, down. And again, this is what happens when the market's kind of in stasis and there's really nothing to push it one way or another. And you just get this continual undulations up and down. There's really nothing to break it out into a full blown trend. Here it is on the daily chart. And so. Um, you know okay so we're approaching this lower trend line again so what's going to happen now are we going to break through and keep going down or are we going to bounce again so you know again i'm not telling you how to trade this because i'm not sure what's going to happen but a low risk trade would be maybe to uh when he touches this trend line to, to put a buy order in and maybe put a stop down around here or so and if it breaks through fine then you have a small loss and, and you get out but it's an opportunity potentially uh, I'm not in this but I will watch the price action and see what it does from here again in in the absence of any um, fundamental news that's just not not there right now so um, where, where else are we in here um, Canadian Swiss uh, yeah we'll just uh, let's see here Canadian Swiss right here so again kind of the same story here now there is canadian news tomorrow morning so we'll see what happens with this um we have canadian gdp whether we um i wouldn't be surprised maybe we see something negative we retest this trend line and continue up so we'll see 
Again, not one of my favorite pairs to trade, but it, there is probably some opportunity there. Um, Euro Kiwi, again, uh, you know, here we have a, a rising wedge, and again, there's the daily chart. We jump down a little bit, and you can see we just keep holding these trend lines every time we go up, and we have a tighter and tighter range happening here. And we have this big move, you know, it bounced right off of this and now pushing down again. Uh, we'll see what happens when it comes back to this trend line again. Do we bounce again or is that the final break uh, and we go down or we shoot back through the top? So, but uh, there probably will be another opportunity to, uh, to trade this. But, you know, clearly it's holding these trend lines for now. And uh, Euro Aussie is kind of similar. Uh, you know, so here's your uh, overall trend line on the Euro Aussie. We broke this trend line, we came back up, tested it, and now we're going back down. And now we concentrate on this this line right here. And this is a small time frame. Um, and so uh, you know we have to we have to look at this with you know uh, a little bit in perspective with you know what what the longer t longer trend chart is doing. Um, uh, you know, on the Euro Aussie, and um, so let's see here. Let's just jump off that platform here. So um, let's see here. Yeah, so you can see, you know, we 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 have this uh, this trend line going down. We've come on bounced and touched it right here, and I would expect that we'll see some more uh, downside move here on the Euro Aussie. On the daily chart, you know, we've broken through. Um, you know, so there is potential to have this continue down maybe to about this area here uh, now that we've broken through. So, uh, again, guys, uh, I'm not going to, you know, belabor this. It's just to, you know, look for obvious channels and wedges. Uh, start around the daily chart and work your way down. Obviously, the higher up on the time frames you can see these patterns, the more reliable they're going to be. And then, you know, again, I use Elliott Wave rules to try to uh, help me. Uh, with stop losses and take profit, even in the light of all this stuff, um, I still keep Elliott in mind, um, and uh, I still keep an eye on on the financial calendar too. But again, it's just really not much around tonight, and so you know I, I really hesitate to, um, um, you know, to say, well, I'm not going to trade at all because there's there's nothing going on here. There is opportunity. So, uh, and I've I've actually done pretty well with some of these this week. So uh, anyways, guys, uh, that is it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I know I went through that really fast. Go back and look again. But again, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse, and, and I don't want to get off track of what I normally do. But I do think there's opportunity here. And, um, you know, the bottom line is, is that even when there's uh, not a ton of uh, stuff on the financial calendar, then the market does tend to just kind of move in, in, in between uh, trend lines, um, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I mean, quite frankly, um, you know, things like this, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because, you know, all traders are seeing this, you know, there's like, okay, well, it's not really going on, not really going on. So, you know, everybody's like, okay, I'm going to wait till it gets up here. I'm going to sell. Well, everybody does that. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, you know, it goes up, they hit this trend line, they come down, they hit this trend line, they buy it, they hit this trend line, they sell it, they hit this trend line, they buy it. And, you know, it, it will take something fi fundamental to break this pattern. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you can't forget about the fundamentals because they're very important because they're ultimately what, what drive patterns like this to end. But as long as there's there's equilibrium in the market and, and, and there's really nothing really big to change it, then you just keep seeing these type of things go on and on and on. And, um, you know, hey, trade them while you can. You know, if you see a nice bounce off of this trend line, then buy it and, you know, buy it all the way back up to this trend line again and then see what happens, you know, get out up here and then see what happens. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, at some point patterns like this are going to end and you're going to either see a break to the upside or the downside. In this case, I would say it's more likely to the downside, but uh, that's why I'm a little hesitant at here because we're back down to this lower trend line. But we'll see what happens, you know, and watch the price action from these levels and see what it does. You know, does it look like it wants to just bounce and go back up or are we going to break and like take out these lows down here? And then I'd be obviously looking for a sell. So anyways, guys, that's it. Um, leave any questions, comments, remarks, anything below, like the video, share it. 
and uh, I appreciate it, and I will talk to everybody really soon. Thanks.